I'm reading from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we're back to this same scripture, 2 Timothy 1, 7, for one more Sunday today. So far as we've been looking at this, we've talked about how God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, or as we, we've seen that that's mainly referring to a spirit of timidity or cowardice. He hasn't even given us that spirit here in the year 2020 with all that's going on, but instead he's given us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and as we'll talk about today, a spirit of a sound mind. Now we know how a spirit of power is very different from a spirit of fear. And we saw last week how a spirit of love can be the opposite of a spirit of fear and can even overcome such fear. But what about this idea of a spirit of a sound mind? How, how is that a contrast to the spirit of fear? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever experienced some some scare and 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 did something in that moment that you knew you shouldn't do or you just did something irrational or or what we might even term crazy you, you just got scared and just reacted to it and then afterwards when you look back at it and you thought about what you did how foolish it was or somebody asked you about why you acted that way you said something like well i i was just so scared i just wasn't thinking clearly Ever done that or said that or maybe heard somebody else confess that? I was afraid, so afraid, I just wasn't thinking clearly. Now do you see that there is a relationship between fear and a sound mind? How one can be opposed to the other? Fear can sometimes keep us from thinking clearly. Some of us may suggest that we don't need fear as an excuse. Now, we have a hard time thinking clearly anyway, even when we're not scared. But fear can make it worse. A spirit of fear can cause us to think or act in ways not in line with a sound mind. And the idea there in that term translated sound mind is a controlled, disciplined mind. One, one that isn't thinking irrationally or letting those thoughts lead to rash, unreasonable, uncontrolled actions. As one Bible scholar notes, it refers to having sound judgment. Sound judgment. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but one of sound judgment. And we're going to talk about that some more here in a minute, how, how we see sound judgment lacking in this fear-filled world we're living in today. But first, let's think as we've done about the other parts of this, this verse here, about the source of this spirit God's given us. We've connected these other characteristics to the Holy Spirit God has given us. The Holy Spirit, God himself, the third person of the Trinity who lives within us. He's our source of power, of spiritual power and of holy boldness. We, we see it in the disciples in the book of Acts, and that same spirit-filled power is available to us. We've seen how the Holy Spirit is also our source of love. We talked about last week how the Bible says he, he pours out the love of God in us. And, and love is the main fruit of the Holy Spirit that springs up in our lives when he's living and working in us. So is there anything in the Bible that connects the Holy Spirit to this idea of our having a spirit of a sound mind? Well, I believe there is. For one thing... The Holy Spirit is referred to as the Spirit of Truth. Over in the Gospel of John, chapters 14 through 16, that section where Jesus is talking to his disciples shortly before his crucifixion, and he spends a lot of time talking to them about the coming of the Holy Spirit and emphasizing uh, who the Holy Spirit is and what he was going to do. And at least three times in that discourse that I counted, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as the spirit of truth. How are you going to have a sound mind and sound judgment apart from truth? I mean, that's part of the problem with our world today, isn't it? Our society is resisting and rejecting the truth. Therefore, they're not thinking clearly. They're not using sound judgment. Jesus told us that the Holy Spirit would teach us 
that he would guide us into all truth and, and would remind us of what Jesus had said. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul also tells us that the Holy Spirit gives us wisdom. He teaches us, teaches us about the deep things of God. And he helps us to discern spiritual things, spiritual truths. So yes, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of a sound mind that God's given us. If we don't have him living in us, and if we aren't letting him guide us, then we aren't going to think very clearly. We're not going to think wisely. and We're not going to exercise good judgment. We look, at a, we look at a lot of what's going on in our world today. And maybe you say to yourself, as I do at times when you're, you're listening to people on the news or, or seeing some of the things that they do or explain, as they explain why they're doing what they're doing or why they, they think the way they think, you know, maybe you say, as I do sometimes, how can people think that way? How can they be so foolish? How can they possibly think that's right or that it even makes sense? Why can't they see the irrationality and the lack of logic and reason in what they're saying and thinking? What's wrong with these people? There just seems to be a, a growing lack of common sense and basic right thinking and reasonable judgment in our world today. What's happening? Well, I believe we're seeing played out what the Bible says happens to people when they turn away from God. That that turning away doesn't just reflect in people's actions, but it affects their minds and their thinking. Listen to some of what it says over in Romans chapter 1 about those who forsake God and, and turn away from His truth. It says, they became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Futile in their thinking, foolish, even though they, they think they're wise, but foolish, and given over to a debased mind. If we turn away from God and truth, resist the Holy Spirit of truth, that's where we end up. That's how you end up with a presidential candidate saying that an 8 to 10 year old should be able to choose his or her gender. That's how you end up with the police being Condemned for shooting a man who was coming at them with a knife. That's how you end up with people making saints out of criminals. That's how you end up with people calling that which is good evil and calling what's evil good. That's how Christians come to be viewed as being dangerous. And that's how science gets elevated as the all-powerful king when it comes to a pandemic, but then science is ignored or downplayed when it comes to abortion and gender identity and the importance of the nuclear family and other issues. People just aren't thinking right because our moral choices and our spiritual condition affect our minds. Spiritual decline leads to a lack of sound thinking and sound judgment. And that deficit of a sound mind becomes even more prevalent when fear enters the picture. And that's where we as believers have to be careful too today. I mean, maybe, hopefully, we're thinking more clearly when it comes to some of these issues that others around us seem to be so mixed up about today. But then, a pandemic enters the picture. Our, our persecution of believers intensifies. And we can find ourselves struggling to keep a sound mind ourselves. We, we get scared and, and we find ourselves being tempted not to think quite so clearly or, or to have as sound of judgment as we should. In the midst of a pandemic, fear can cause us to not think clearly about uh, issues related to freedom and, and government control or, or just to, to think we have the dire need to stock up on toilet paper. Society starts turning against people who uphold biblical values. And fear causes us to not think so clearly about some of those issues and, and maybe to start compromising some of our beliefs in order to avoid conflict and persecution. 
Fear can cause us to become irrational and to get our priorities mixed up in life, including those priorities of seeking God and His kingdom first and and staying true to His word. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of a sound mind. I, I believe He can help us keep our heads, so to speak, when those around us are panicking and losing theirs. Remember that Paul and Timothy were living in a society that was hostile toward Christians. I mean, Paul was writing this letter from prison. And he knew that Timothy was likely going to face opposition and persecution. We get the impression from some of the things that Paul writes in these letters that that Timothy might have had more of a natural tendency toward being timid. And fear could magnify that tendency and make it even more of a temptation to follow. So that's one of the reasons Paul reminds Timothy that God's given him the Holy Spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And we don't just live in a similar world today where there are things that that could cause us to be timid and fearful. I believe there are people and forces forces at work trying to stir up fear in our world, trying to make people afraid and trying to intimidate believers and make us afraid to to stand up for truth and to to be bold about what we believe and in how we live. I was reading one of those websites that raises and answers Bible questions. And it said about this particular idea we're talking about, it said, Fear is one of Satan's favorite devices to confuse our minds, cause irrational thoughts and misunderstandings, and derail us from the will of God. And that's true. The devil wants to scare us so we don't think clearly, so we get confused and and we don't exercise the faith and trust in God that we know is reasonable. I mean, in light of who God is and what he's done for us, it's reasonable to trust him, even when there are scary things going on in the world around us. Remember what Paul said, wrote to the Romans over there in Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 probably very familiar verses to you it says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable service and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We're to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We're not to be like the fear-filled world around us. We're to have a renewed mind, a mind focused on God and His promises, a mind that knows we can trust God no matter what comes our way. I like the way this article on that website went on to describe the sound mind God can give us. It says, A sound mind is not overly concerned with the cares and problems of this life, but is set on God and His kingdom. A sound mind is alert and sober, focused on the eternal hope we have in Christ Jesus. A sound mind recognizes who we are in Christ and does not depend on human wisdom and strength. A sound mind is guarded through prayer and purity. As much as we're concerned about what's going on in our nation and the world around us today, and rightly so, there are spiritual implications in in what's taking place. There are spiritual battles being fought. I mean, what's going on today is important. But at the same time, we need to remember that we're not primarily citizens of this world but citizens of the kingdom of God. And we need to keep our eyes on God and what He's doing and on His purposes. We need to keep focused on Jesus and who He is and our relationship with Him and the mission that He's given us to fulfill in this world. We need to stay focused on that no matter who the president is, no matter what happens to America, or whether we find favor with society or are being persecuted by it. We need to keep walking with God and obeying Him and being light and salt in this world, even during pandemics and even maybe especially 
when we're facing a world that considers us the enemy. The world wants us to think in ways that will cause fear to rise up in us. But God calls us to think in ways that lead to faith and purity and peace of mind so, so that we can be calm and think clearly and not give in to the irrational thinking that accompanies panic. Remember what it says over in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. Let me read that. Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Think, meditate on good things, things that are true and good and pure. And the peace of God will guard our hearts and minds. We can experience peace of mind even in troubling times. I like one other person's comment I read on this part of this verse from 2 Timothy. He said, If your mind is tempted to succumb to fear, you can allow God's Word and the Holy Spirit to work in you to deliver, rescue, revive, and salvage your mind. This means your rationale, logic, and emotions can be shielded from the illogical, absurd, ridiculous, unfounded, and crazy. And when your mind is guarded by the Word of God, you think differently. When the Word of God is allowed to work in your mind, it safeguards your emotions. It defends your mind from demonic assault, and it shields you from arrows the enemy may try to shoot in your direction in order to arouse a spirit of fear inside you. Let's guard our minds with the Word of God. In these fearful times, we ought to be spending more time in God's Word. We ought to be reminding ourselves of the truth in order to guard against all the lies and the half-truths and the confusing deceptions that are all around us. You know, people they, you know, don't know what to believe or what not to believe. They, they don't know who's telling the truth and, and, and who isn't about so much of what's going on in our world today. And we may have a hard time discerning that at times too. But we know God is telling us the truth. We know His Word is true. We know we can count on God's faithfulness and we can depend on Him to do as He says. So let's immerse ourselves in the truths of the Bible. Let's allow its words and its truths to instill clarity and faith and peace in us rather than confusion and fear. Spend time in the Word. Study it. Meditate on it. Let it get in your heart and change your attitude and actions. Let it cause you to think differently and more reasonably and clearly about what's going on around us, as well as about those personal challenges and problems that you may be facing in your life today. Guard your mind with God's Word. If you're mainly taking into your heart and mind what the news media is saying, what the politicians are saying, what the TV personalities or radio personalities are saying, you're going to be fearful and confused and not thinking clearly. But if you focus primarily on what God says and what His Word records that God has done throughout history and all the truths about who He is and what He can do and what He's going to do, then you can experience the blessing of a sound mind and sound judgment. Some of us may need to turn off our TVs or our radios or get off those internet sites and open up our Bibles. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of a sound mind. So, so, so when fearful situations pop up and you're tempted to not think clearly, try to stop and focus on God Focus on truth, focus on His Word, and remember the Spirit God's given you, that the Holy Spirit 
who lives in you is the spirit of truth who can renew your mind and give you peace of mind.